everyone, welcome to this crafts pie lesson with my little baby Secret, who is my little two-year-old thoroughbred, and we're going to be doing a crafts pie lesson on blanketing. Uh, welcome to this little virtual lesson. I figure we could all learn a little something about our horses, even though we're not doing riding lessons right now. So I'm Lindsay Partridge, owner of Partridge Horse Sale and founder of Harmony Horsemanship. So Secret's gonna help us with learning about some blankets. So first off, uh, for blanketing, a couple of reasons why you might want to blanket a horse are if maybe they're in a field or a shelter, or a, sorry, they're in a field where to get their hay, they're not gonna be in a sheltered area and they're gonna be experiencing high winds, high rains with, that are kind of cool temperatures. Horses can do really well in snow, but they don't do very well in cold rain. And when a horse gets cold stressed, they will shiver. And if they shiver for prolonged periods of time, that can cause them to go into colic stress. It can cause them to have uh, other issues. So it's good to make sure that our horses are able to stay uh, warm and dry. In an ideal world, horses would have the ability to go into the forest and continue to eat and forage in the forest. The reality at our farm is we live on the top of a really big hill, so we get hit with really high winds. And the horses do have shelters in their field, but if they want to eat their food, they have to come out of their shelter. And so we know that when they experience high wind and high rain during co cooler temperatures, they're gonna be prone to cold stress. Now, a general rule of thumb is that if the horse is not sweating and not shivering, then you've got the right blanket for your horse. If your horse is sweating, then you need to use a lighter blanket. And if your horse is shivering, then you need to use a heavier blanket. Blanket weight is determined or referred to in grams. So right now she is wearing a 100 gram blanket. Where you can tell this is usually on blankets, when we go to take them off, right on the inside flap, there's usually some type of tag that tells us what they are. Usually when you open them up, it's usually around the front area, and they usually say on them both the size of the blanket, which is usually in inches, so this is a 72 inch, and then it also usually tells you the weight of the blanket as well. Sometimes they don't, but sometimes they do. And otherwise, what you're doing is going to go off of the feel of the blanket. This one here is just called a medium, and medium is typically a 100 gram or a 150 gram fill. And when I feel the blanket, that's kind of what it feels like as well. So uh, grams is about the weight of the blanket. 72 inches or whatever the inches, sometimes it's in centimeters, but usually it's in inches, it refers to the size of the blanket and refers to the length of the blanket. And then the denier refers to the toughness of the blanket. So 1200 denier is usually considered kind of the best, but sometimes the way marketers do it, depending on how the fabric's woven and stuff like that, not all 1200 denier is necessarily created equal. So. Usually higher denier is better, but not always the case. So with uh, blankets, what I want to go over is how to take them off, um, put them on, uh, choosing the appropriate blanket, things like that. And hopefully you learn something new, and if not, a little refresher. So the weight of the blanket, we talked about that a little bit, and how if the horse is sweating or shivering, we need to change the blanket. One of the things that we need to know is that if you put a rain sheet on a horse, which is a zero, usually a zero gram fill, then if it's cold weather, you can sometimes actually make your horse colder and worse off because what will happen is it flattens the fur of the horse and then it's cold. And so what happens is normally when a horse is not wearing a blanket, their hair sticks up a little bit and it traps the heat inside. And so if you put a ring sheet on your horse and you flatten the fur down, then they cannot trap the heat in their fur and because you put a rain sheet on with zero gram fill now they don't have any heat insulation and they can actually be colder with that blanket than not another really important thing is that we need to make sure the blanket is dry that is touching their skin so often what we do at our farm is we put two blankets on our horses 
We have the underneath blanket, which will have whatever layer fill we want. And then we put what we call a beater sheet on top, which is a rain sheet. It's got no fill. And the idea is that between the two layers that the horse will be protected and waterproof. If it's a good blanket, you don't necessarily need the top layer, but that's why sometimes you put the two blankets on because it's important not to have a wet blanket on your horse. Of course, other reasons to have um, a blanket on your horse could be it's easier to keep them clean in the muddy season, um, easier to get them ready to ride and stuff like that as well. There are often a lot of arguments that go on about blanketing or not blanketing. And uh, one of them is that if you blanket the horse's body, it doesn't do anything, it messes them up because their head's not covered and their leg's not covered. But it's kind of the same thing as humans. The idea is that we warm the core so that way I don't need to cover my nose or my cheeks or uh, the other parts of my body because my core is warm and therefore uh, the heat is circulating easier. So it's the same idea with the horses. Good to know all these little things. So you talked about uh, different types of blankets, the weights, uh, being careful to make sure that you choose a blanket that's not going to cause your horse to shiver or sweat. So we're going to go over taking our blankets off and on. So in general, you're supposed to take a blanket off starting from the back, working to the front, and when you put it on, going vice versa. Now the reason for this is that if let's say something were to happen and my horse were to spook or get loose or run away, we don't want the blanket to be attached by just the leg straps around the horse's body because then that's going to cause an issue uh, in terms of safety. It'd be better to have the front part done up. Uh, but that's unlikely to happen in the cross side. So when you take off a blanket, back to front, just like slow, and then you can pull it off of your horse. When you put a blanket on a horse, you want to be careful that you're putting it on up at the top of the horse's neck area and then sliding it back into position so that way the fur is going to lay flat. If you put it on back here and then pull it up to the horse, now I'm pulling her fur backwards on her bum, which is going to be uncomfortable but it's also pulling her fur the wrong way so it's going to make it even harder for her to maintain any type of heat insulation whatsoever. It's just going to be awkward for her. So we want to put it on at the top and pull back into position. Now you would do up your straps at the front. You want the front neck area to be pretty snug. This blanket is actually a little bit too big here. You want it to be snug because if this area is left too wide, now it doesn't mean you have to go way up on here. It just means that for the horse, you have to look at this opening around your neck. If this is sitting too too open to the point that, that this is spreading, that's going to be, see how it's dropping below her chest area here, her shoulder? That's going to cause some very severe rubs. So we need that to sit so it's closed, so that way when it comes back, it's not dropping down and going to cause rubs in here. Ideally, we'd like to see this night as a blanket where it's snug right up around so that way the pressure is not building on the points of her shoulder that it's coming around the front. So you want to do up both and when you do up these you want to put them through make sure you actually put them through the little metal pieces and through the little keepers and the reason for that is when the horses are out playing around if you put it out just like this where I've only done it through the buckle but not actually through the metal piece or the keeper, she could be out there playing or catching something and pull on it and now it's undone and it's gonna come off out in the field. So you wanna make sure that that's properly, fully done up through the buckle part and through the little keeper. Then when it comes to the belly straps, you wanna make sure that the blanket's on even and that you're crossing these underneath the horse's belly. So they are crossed. There are some blankets where the straps will actually go straight under and across, but you'll be able to tell the difference because the actual strap will appear to come straight down. Rather, these ones sit on an angle. Then for the leg straps, you want to, some, some of them have a leg strap, some of them have a tail strap. And it's important, so important that you do this because 
If you don't have a tail strap or a leg strap, what happens is there's a big gust of wind that comes and it will actually take the blanket and because it's not secured in any way, shape, or form, it actually slides, the wind can slide it all the way up and then if she were to put her head down right now, this could just completely slide off her whole body and then the blanket gets tromped into the mud on the ground and gets frozen in there or into the snow and it's not usable until it gets washed or cleaned again. So you have to make sure it has a tail strap or leg strap. Leg straps, super important, they go around the horse's leg and they clip back on the same side. So I'm going to do this one around her leg and it comes back on the same side over here. Now the other leg one, this is really important, goes around the leg, but it also goes through the other leg strap. So that way it pulls it away from the horse's uh, body and it isn't rubbing on them. So it kind of keeps it out. So you have the one and now I'm going to take the other one and go around it to come back onto itself. So the left one stays on the left side, the right one stays on the right side. So I can switch sides of the horse, or I can just do it from here, where I'm just reaching under. So the other type of strap would be a tail strap. And a tail strap is simply a strap that goes from one side of the blanket at the back to the other side. And you have to make sure that the tail comes through that, so that way, if the blanket were to get caught by that gust of wind that's going to pull it up, that the tail strap stops it because it hits the tail underneath the tail bone. So those are my key tips for blanketing. I'm going to show you guys a little different ankle so you can see the straps. This is just showing you guys the blanket straps, the sur single straps. So because they go on an angle, it means that they get crisscross underneath the horse. And so if we come down, you can see that they crisscross under there. And then for the tail strap and the leg straps, I'm going to bring you down and around here again, and we're going to take a look underneath the horse. And you can see that the leg straps are through each other, so they're off. It's pulling them away from her legs because they're through each other. So if it was going to be a tail strap, it would simply just connect on the side here. You would want to make sure the tail strap goes underneath the tail here and connect where you see that little triangle ring where the leg strap is connected to. But you have to make sure the tail goes over top of that strap. Otherwise, it could be an issue of the blanket falling off the horse. Thank you for watching our virtual lesson on blanketing, covering reasons why we might want a blanket. If you learned something, I would love to see in the comments what you learned or what you found interesting. And we would love to get your support here at the farm for our lesson horses that are not able to stay in work right now because of the pandemic. If you're able to contribute anything, you can uh, follow the link to the website for more information.